So today we're going to do interlocking squares. Now, interlocking squares is an eight-point construction, which is different than what we've done in the past. What we've done in the past is a six-point construction. So, don't go ahead and follow along with the steps. So, we are going to start with a center point and a circle. Same as we did uh, yesterday, but that's where the similarities end. So we will make a center point, and then we are going to make a circle around that center point. And your circle should be as large as possible without going off of the page. As large as possible without going off the page. I could probably go a little bit larger. A little bit larger. All right. So you have a center point and a circle. Then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to make a diameter. And I am being careful to make sure that my construction lines are light because I will require some erasing towards the end. So now that I have my center point, circle, and diameter, I'm going to have to make something called a perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular means that you have two lines or line segments that meet at a 90 degree angle, perpendicular. Bisector means I'm going to cut something into two, uh, two equal shapes, or two equal sides. Bi meaning two, sect meaning cut. So we're making a perpendicular bisector. Now to make a perpendicular bisector, what I'm going to do is I am going to put my metal compass point on the intersection of my diameter and my circle. And then I'm going to open my compass past the center, like that. Then, once I have my compass open past this halfway point, and I can see that it's a little bit past the center point. It doesn't have to be ex you know, extraordinarily past it, just enough that it's noticeable. I'm going to make two arcs, one above the center point, and one below my center point. Then without allowing the compass to change settings, I'm going to do the exact same thing from the other intersection. And I'm going to draw my arc so that it intersects my previous arc. So now I have two, a pair, of intersecting arcs. One is above the center point and one is below the center point. So then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to connect my two intersecting arcs. And I'm going to create a new diameter. And I know I've done it right if my diameter goes through this intersection, through the center, and through that intersection. So now I have two diameters that perpendicular, that bisect each other at a perpendicular angle. So now, uh, if I were so inclined, I, I could take out a protractor and I could measure this and Sure enough, it's 90 degrees. Come on, rotate. There we go. So I can't get it on the line. Oh, there we go. So it's a 90 degree angle, you can see that. But I knew that without measuring, because we constructed it right. So now, my next step is, I'm going to have to make some 
angle bisectors, and an angle is formed when two lines or line segments or rays meet, forming an angle. An angle bisector is when you cut an angle into two equal pieces. Bi meaning two, sec meaning cut, so you're cutting the angle into two equal sections. So to do this, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take our compass, oops, and we're going to place it on the intersection of the circle and the diameter. It's about right. Now, I'm going to have to have my compass open past what I think the angle bisector will be. So I need to make an educated guess of where the angle bisector will occur. So I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere around here. This isn't, I can't just draw the line because it won't be right and my drawing won't turn out right. So what I'm going to do is, oops, I'm going to close my compass so that it is a little bit past that imaginary bisector. And then what I'm going to do is just like my perpendicular bisector for my angle bisector, I'm going to make some arcs. And I'm going to make arcs on either side of my intersection point right here. Without letting my compass move, I'm going to repeat that step for every intersection of a diameter and a and the circle. So I've done half of it so far. And the trick here is you have to have the arcs intersecting, like this one here. My arcs are not intersecting at, uh, right now over here, and I can fix that in a moment. I'll do that after I make this arc here. So making larger arcs is probably not a bad idea. So I, it just means I have to go back, make sure I have the exact same point, which I do. And I just need to extend my line so that it crosses. And now I have one more set of arcs to make coming off of this uh, intersection point. So I have that one. And there we go. So now we have two pairs of intersecting arcs that we are going to connect to make some more diameters. So I'm going to take my ruler. My ruler's gotten a little big here. And I'm going to connect my intersecting arcs across the circle to form two more. That's not what I wanted to do to form two more diameters. There's one, and actually I'll extend it all the way through to show that it does in fact intersect the points of intersection. And then I'll draw the other one. And you, that one's a little bit low. You know that you've done it right if the uh, points of intersection go through the center point. Now I'm a little bit off on that one, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to redo that line because I, I want it to be right. Still, still a little low. So you see how mine's jumping edges. Hopefully that's a little bit better, let's see. Yep, that's better. So now I have two sets 
two more sets of diameters, and you've noticed that I've color coded them, that'll help us out later in our drawing. So now, we're going to make two squares. We're going to make two separate squares. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the points of intersection of the circle and the diameter. And I'm going to connect the blues together to make one square. I'm going to connect the yellows together to make a second square. So, for my blue square, I'm going to go ahead and connect the points here. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, I guess I can keep doing it. Swing it like a hinge over to this one. Having troubles connecting it here. There we go. So now I have a blue square. The most common mistake is to have your corners of your square not occurring on the circle. Make sure that your corners are exactly on the circle. Your next step is to connect the yellows together. So we are going to make another square, and this time I'm just connecting the intersections of the yellow diameters with the intersection or, or with the uh, the intersection of the yellow diameters with the circle. And so now I have two squares. They're perfect in every way. And I've done all my construction lines. So the next video, part two, shows how to do the rest of it, how to put it all together. So please uh, go ahead and feel free to start part two to finish this drawing right here.